Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XII with me, Get Daved, in the last episode. We, uh, we got an exposition dump. We learned a lot. Oh, well that guy's dead already. Just thinking about the wisdom of... Too heavily on Bosch. He does have, quote, bad equipment. But we can just sub him out if uh, that becomes, becomes a prudent thing to do. We can just modify. Okay, we gotta do a couple things. First things first. Gotta get the golden amulet back on Pinello. She's on the lowest level and also, yeah, the lowest uh, license point level kind of goes with that. So let's try catching up there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Ash has got a little bit of an experience point lead there. Cool 20,000 up on the next closest person. She's actually Bosch. Uh, really interesting. Anyway. We also have to worry about Pinello getting... Oh, maybe it's this other pathway. They'll probably join up, but no matter. Uh, we have to worry about Pinello getting more gambits, getting more equipment, but again, we'll get there. And I started talking about this and then failed. So. Alright, he's not going to have enough for even a Gambit license. I wonder how effective Dark uh, will be. There we go. We've got a nice default attack Gambit now. I'll say I'm appreciating the the gambit system a lot more than the first time around. You know what? Call me old fashioned, but I'm just gonna punch this child. Oh, she's really. Oh no, she's ripping everyone to shreds. I forgot she's so hard to hit. Stupid 50% evasion rate. That was kind of funny how that worked out. Yeah, spending some MP undoing your handiwork now. Let's check the big map, the big board, and just confirm things. Yeah. Still, Shrine of Miriam is. Great work, Vaughn. At least we got an ice stone. Oh no. Okay, it's only level 25. Immune to physical attacks, okay. Gotta wait till they turn blue. Might as well leave Bash in there. Uh, 
And you know what? We're gonna do one other thing. Is that immune to silence? No, that's not the one I want. Rose Corsage. Okay, she should be able to reach it. It's weak to lightning, so I don't think we can boost that anyway. Let's also see if we can turn it up to 11. Eight eighty seven. This is going to be Is it under green? Is it under arcane? some healing in theory. times. Possibly more if we're unlucky. It's kind of encouraging how quickly Bosch took out that other thing, though. Lots of dedicated one-on-one -on -one time. We'll see if we can take something from it. Cool. Cool. I'm really enjoying this. I guess we just keep burning through Echo Orbs for now. We're tanking worse from him, so... Generate somehow that I didn't notice. Just thought we were getting a little closer. Choose a new party leader. Yeah. Sorry for this. Now you know why I hate elementals. <laughs> yeah, like all damage is missing him right now. not taking physical damage. Comment section, I need your help, and we need to run. Is 
we burn through all of our resources on an unremarkable enemy. Well, good start. Way to mix it up, team. That was a train wreck. But why? Is there a thing I don't know about? Like, uh, there are spells that negate uh, basically all damage. I really hate them in this game. They do happen. Enemies will cast, like, a physical barrier. Or magical barrier. And all that. Um... And just negates damage for a long time. It's pretty common in boss fights, actually. <laughs> Including the final boss fight in this game. I'll just... Wow, she's regenerating MP. Just one-shotting all these enemies. Yeah, yeah. You just... Have to wait until... Uh, until you can damage them again. Can be a little frustrating. Not unlike getting your butt handed to you by an element. Elemental. Anyway, comment section, let me know if you know what happened. Did I just come across a money farming place? Maybe we just had really crazy luck getting the rare drop twice in a row, but I mean, we could sell that for a couple thousand, I think. have your gambits back. Stay nice and far away. Careful, Vaughn. Fearsome. That other corner of the map really looks like the sort of place where a treasure would be hidden, but gotta make up for some lost time. And also, we got just some utterly delectable stuff. There it is. Nice little buffing circle. All that for a one gill. It's the trickiest hitbox I've ever seen. Ooh. Casual Murasame. Also, it's kind of funny. The minimap in the corner is really useless. It shows basically less than I can see with my own eyes. And then you gotta have this thing open all the time. be enough for Pinello. Whoops. Man, when you're in a hurry to get something on the license board, it feels like it's all going in slow motion. Okay. Now we can get a more aggressive one in here. Oh, Kiraga is one. Interesting.
This way it'll never actually get triggered. Yeah, I don't think we have any more specific gambits than that. Well, comment section again, you let me know if you uh, know of a good way of reconciling Kira and Kiraga gambits together. I'd be interested in that. Doesn't matter uh, how good you are at the game, which I'm... This is basically a blind playthrough. Or, I don't know. I guess I remember some details pretty well. You obtained death! Well, glad to have you with us. Uh, but anyway, yeah. There's... Collective intelligence is always the best, right? It's one thing that irks me about movies a lot. They often promote the, sort of, the myth of the super genius. Where it's like, no, you're the only person who can figure out. In real life, it's not like that. There's... So many smart people. Like the imitation game, for example. Don't get me wrong. Mr. Alan Turing was a genius, but he even said that um, if he got kicked off of the project, he, his buddies would have figured it out. Like, they were pretty close. That's just how it is. It's always going to be important and valuable, but... There's... I don't know, there's always... There's always a way you could offset the loss of a person or whatever. There's always... You know, a group could get together and achieve usually better results. Basically, opposite theme of the Justice League movie. If we work together, no, it's still not working. We're just gonna have to get the MVP back. I'm not holding the controller right now. There we go. I mean, I know she has a better weapon. But I hope you're really seeing just how much Pinello's getting dead. Because actually, remember, her weapon's one tier behind. Bash is just two levels behind, but... Just that quick charge on the dagger. And she has much lower strength. Yeah, 36 versus... 54. Daggers use your speed a little bit too, but as you can see, that's not really gonna... It's not gonna account for the entire difference, you know? Ooh, fine wool! Alright, murder him in his sleep. He had it coming. Yeah, half damage. I wonder if I should have bought another one of those. I just thought of that looking at his uh, giant snowflake shield, which... <laughs> sounds like we're getting political again. Should have used that in the last episode. This episode, we wield the snowflake shield and the cuck bracer. Brought to you by modern rhetoric.
Hello, boy, Vaughn. Cool, buck 16. Add one person in the comment section. We were talking about license boards, and one person was basically saying they really like the original better. There were not unique license boards. I think I've gone the wrong way. Everyone had basically the same one. I think they had different starting locations, maybe. I've gone off. Off the correct path. Yeah, not quite yet. Um, and my experience of that was basically every character ended up the same. But it doesn't have to be that way. But yeah. You know. Magic also wasn't very good, so it's tough to say. Like, I didn't really have any mages. Everyone just. If you could choose, you would want powerful healing magic on everyone, right? And you would want as many magic lore and. Uh, battle lords and everyone as possible. Those are just, like, objectively good, right? So... Oh, no, I like that the... How are we gonna get over there? I like that the class system basically forces you into having some unique characters. That was your chance to steal, Vaughn. I wish there was a Moogle where I could have bought the map. Well, it's alright. We're accomplishing some important grinding while we do this. Good, I don't buy items. coming out as often as it is, but it's basically like every 10 seconds right now. Uh, there was what, one area we didn't really explore before. Maybe that had one of those fancy looping paths. Power rod? Name of my best move. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, it would be for Pinello. That's pretty strong. In lots of different ways. Evade minus um, 59, though. So, thank you, no. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your time on Hoth. Anyway, now it's time for our scalding hot take of this episode. I actually think the license board is kind of bad. Here's why. Uh, maybe I mentioned it before already. I don't know. I feel like I mentioned it. You get experience points and license points when you defeat an enemy. Yeah, maybe I've mentioned this before. I'm sorry if it had. Commentary gets weird when we're going for a jog. Um... No. 
Did I mention something when they were like, be sure to go from Galmore Jungle? Uh, you get both resources when you kill enemies, right? And a lot of the stuff is pretty rote. Like, okay, you obviously need your equipment get, or licenses, and you need your spell licenses, and you need your stat licenses, and basically all of those, since they're being doled out at the same rate as your experience points, those should just be like, you should just have all of these gambits. The power-ups, those are or like the battle lores and the HP-ups, those should just be like stat upgrades that come with your level-ups, because they're basically the same thing. And you should really just have a few abilities on here, and I don't think any of it should be gated. Yeah, I said it. Just pick what you want from a list. I don't actually like skill trees that much. I like skill lists, like an FF Tactics. I learned how to drive a standard before I learned automatic transmission. It was harder. Cost me more license points, but I did it. Anyway, uh, we'll end this episode here. Let me know what you think. Uh, actually, no, I'm not done yet. The worst implementation is in FF13, where you get your experience points, and you have to open the menu. And it's kind of like the license board, but people didn't like if you left like one thing behind, you had to navigate all the way back. So, any uh, like on the license board, any node you've unlocked, you can grow from. So, in the Crystarium... All bonuses are tied to that, and again, how is it any different than just automatically doling them out? They just made a bunch of fancy particle effects. Maybe there's something in the far left area. Maybe, ironically, we didn't save time at all. Yeah, you just have to go into a menu to get the upgrades you were already going to get in your level up. I don't think that's a good thing. Saw a structure and got excited. Well, we're in the neighborhood, maybe we'll go pick up the ice brand, which would be good to have long term anyway. Yeah, jeez. Uh, license, or pardon me, the sphere grid in FF10 I think was also really bad as well because the only choices you really had to make were if you would go off the um, progression trail to pick up like maybe Fyra was on it but you needed to go off to the side and waste a couple seed levels to get Thundera and Blazera. But why wouldn't you want them? Would you not always want all three? The game specifically has enemies to challenge you on that. So, that's not really a choice, because there's only one right answer. Cool, we got both. Anyway. Better off doing something like Materia, where they can be transported and grow specific ones. Like, you know, because you can put the material you want to develop into your double growth slots and everything. Ah, that was a system. See you in the next episode, everyone.